Today is Lutheran Campus Ministry Sunday. We're so grateful to Emma, our preacher today, and for our partnership with Lutheran Campus Ministry Twin Cities. Sharing a meal with a stranger is more important than understanding or having the right answer. Disciples with the risen Jesus had actual physical proof, but even that didn't convince them. While the disciples were disbelieving and still wondering, they share a meal with a stranger around the table. They experienced radical hospitality and grace. Faith in Jesus was birthed around a table and still celebrated at tables that feed us all, transforming hearts and lives for the better. Welcome. children. Earth Day is coming up this week. And to help us get ready for Earth Day, I'd like to read the Earth Book by Todd Parr. I take care of the earth because I know I can do little things every day to make a big difference. I use both sides of the paper and bring my own bags to the market because I love the trees and I want the owls to have a place to live. I turn off the faucet while I brush my teeth and use less water for my baths because I love the fish and I want the oceans to stay blue. I take the school bus and ride my bike 
because I love the stars and I want the air to be clear so I can see them sparkle. I try to eat every bite on my plate and save my leftovers because I love watching things grow. And I want there to be enough food for everyone. I remember to turn off the lights and shut the refrigerator to save energy because I love the polar bears and I want the snowmen to stay cool. I throw garbage in the trash can and recycle glass, aluminum, paper, and plastic because I love to walk barefoot in the grass and I don't want to move to Mars. Most of all, I help take care of the earth because I want us all to be happy and healthy. <laughs> Every one of us can help protect the earth and make it feel good. Remember, if we take care of it, it will take care of us. Love, Todd. <laughs>
one God, now and forever. Amen. Hello, LCM Sunday congregations. Uh, I am Pastor Kate Ryer Welton, and I'm your Lutheran campus pastor at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. So grateful to be in front of you today in whatever way that you're gathering. We've certainly learned a lot in a year and a month, haven't we? In some ways, uh, campus ministry was really made for this moment. It is made for this moment of so much uncertainty and unknown. We're a liminal people in transition, always being pulled outwards into the community to find new ways of connecting with people, students, and proclaiming the good news of God's mercy, God's love, and God's justice. As we have walked with students over the years, not just this last year, uh, a culture of curiosity of authenticity and community building, servant-heartedness has emerged, and we have seen the fruits of that culture show up in beautiful ways over the last year. In other ways, this pandemic has been uniquely challenging for our ministry. As we shifted primarily online, we lost many of the ways of uh, that we knew to meet new students and help them feel connected to community. Uh, our regular in-person gatherings and retreats and spring breaks were canceled or limited uh, to short times together on Zoom. Our older students, this is really important, our older students weren't able to mentor our newer students. And while new students showed up uh, through the grace of God and some really hard social media work, <laughs> we still have much work ahead of us to rebuild and reconnect our community in the service of the gospel, of course. As we look forward to our next school year, students are eager to do the work of rebuilding at the University of Minnesota, primarily by reaching out to students for one-to-one -one conversations over the course of this spring and summer to discern what it is that folks are hungering for in relationship to God and their faith and also in their college experience. I'm here today because we need your help to do that rebuilding work. We are so grateful for the ways you and your congregation have supported us in the past. And as we look ahead, we need you to connect us with the gophers that you know. Even if it's just for a conversation, we really want to be in touch with students at the U of M. We need your financial support, and we are certainly in need of your prayers during this rebuilding. I promise. I'm not just saying we need prayers because I'm a pastor and we're a church. We really do need your prayers in this uh, as, we, as we step into whatever the Holy Spirit is going to lead us into. So, I mean, God is certainly always making us new. And this point in time is no different. So if you have capacity to contribute in any or all of these ways, know how grateful I am and that we are. Thank you so much for being church together. Salam. Wangil Johannes. Salsa im Arab. Kab hade sega shawate. Kab tom frisawian. Neke de moze sumu so ai. Halagai hood nabare. Nasub leiti nab yosus masu. Rebbe bejekati amlah musu zuhane sub. Nazi Nesha to go to Zorha to Amrat, Kirkab Zahir Yel Bonomo, Nesha Mamir Krenka, Kab Amla, Kamzaka, Nefalit Alona. Yosos the Ma, Kabla Ali in the late whole day. Mengist Amla, Kirya Zahel Kamz Yelbo, Bahakib, Hakib, La Kalohu, Ilumarasalo. Nikad Moska, Nesev Kemis Arege, Kulet Kamelu Kalo. Melissa Naba Kersa at you, at you, Kulle di Karo, you Bolo. Yosos Melissa Hakim Hakim Le Kalahu. Come mine, Menfus, and does it all day. I'm Menkis Amlak Katuzhil, Yelborn. Come cigar told the cigayu. Come Menfus told the ah, Menfus you. Come Lani Katwulet Bukit this, you Sulazable Koha. I to Gurrab. A reading from 1 John, 
See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet be, been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Hi all, um, my name is Emma Yella. I'm a second year student at the University of Minnesota. I study sociology uh, with minors in economics and sustainability studies. And I've been a member of Lutheran Campus Ministries at the U of M for about a year and a half. The gospel reading is from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. When Jesus appears to his disciples, it says, while they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and they thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, see that I am myself. Touch me and see for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, these are my words that I have spoken to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Within the passages today, I'm really struck by the idea of lawlessness within sin. For I wonder who or what really determines the laws that we abide by. This week just has been the case throughout the past year. We have been witness to how our penal laws are used to criminalize and otherwise oppress the most marginalized within our communities. We witnessed Officer Kim Potter murder Dante Wright in Brooklyn Center, all the while the trial of Derek Chauvin loans in Minneapolis apparently seeking justice for a man who can never get his life back. And it is our official state sanctioned laws that have allowed for such violence to exist for over 400 years in the so-called United States. Certainly the murder of George Floyd and subsequent uprising were not isolated events. In reality, there is an entire culture of oppression within our society that feels especially apparent this week as the black community mourns yet another life. And all the while indigenous people and their allies up north face ongoing violence and oppression as they fight for their land, water, health and safety, as they fight for their futures, their ancestors and their creator. Once again, it is state sanctioned laws that allow for such violence. But this violence is not the result of lawlessness, 
Really, I believe that the opposite is true. First John clearly relates sin and lawlessness when it says that everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. And once again, I think that this begs the question of whose law we are to follow. Even if we separate ourselves as Christians from greater society, do we really all interpret and follow the same laws? The reality is that our community has been used as a tool to further systemic oppression in the United States more than it has stopped it. Fortunately, I do think that Christians today are more aware of this fact than perhaps we've ever been. In my own experience, I feel so aware of how Christianity has been used as a tool to oppress communities that I care about, even some communities that I am a part of, that I sometimes feel almost embarrassed to admit that I'm a Christ follower. As a matter of fact, I've had friends tell me that they're surprised to find out that I am an active Christian. But just this past week, I made a new friend while working on Line 3 Resistance up north and came to find out that he studies theology at Augsburg College with an emphasis in liberation and plans to go to seminary. It was surprisingly refreshing to randomly meet a peer in a secular social justice space who is so passionate and so joyous about his faith as an ELCA Lutheran. He made a comment to me that really stuck, which is that so often we as progressive Christians attempt to separate ourselves from conservative or white nationalist Christianity. We, especially white Christians, attempt to paint ourselves as good Christians who are unlike those who cause harm or even claim that Christians who do cause such harm are not really Christians. But altogether, we hold a shared legacy that stems from the experience of a Jewish person of color who was murdered by the state. Our identities cannot be completely removed from each other, nor can the responsibility of fighting for the world that God wants for us. Jesus is quite frank in the Gospel of Luke. The disciples question the reality of Jesus, and he says, touch me and see for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Jesus and his disciples sat and ate and were in community just as we are with one another. We may not see and feel Jesus in the flesh, but there is God in our communities. In this divisive year, I've seen God and many strangers turn friends. I've been fortunate to take part in climate justice and police abolition organizing within my campus community over the past year and feel that I've learned quite a lot from these spaces. You see, it is often said that social movements happen at the speed of relationships, which is to say that there really is strength in numbers and strength in community. While being so physically disconnected this year, I've gained wonderful friendships with some of the most affirming people I have ever had in my life. And I think that this part of the story is so important because we cannot sustain the good work without love for each other, without enjoyment, without joy. And there is such joy in the sanctity of our humanness, isn't there? And there's joy in the spaces that we build for the liberation of our humanity. You see, I see God in fights for collective liberation every day. She is present. She mourns with us and she celebrates our victories and our joy. God is proud to see us in community and admiration for her word. I see God in Lutheran campus ministries. We have a radical love for each other such that LCM is a space of growth. We converse and we debate. We find joy in working on ourselves through each other. I started coming to LCM about a year and a half ago and was initially very apprehensive about being a part of a Christian campus community. I wondered if LCM merely adorned a facade of progression or if a diversity of folks would really feel comfortable in the space. And while there will always be work to do in our community, LCM has truly been a welcoming and affirming place for me. We follow a law of love and admiration for our creator, our communities and ourselves. And there is great joy in that. Jesus has appeared to me through LCM, especially over the past year. I have not doubted his presence because I see him physically in our community, just as he said would be true. 
You see, we are witnesses to his love for us and the forgiveness of our sins. Though we are also witnesses to suffering, we witness repentance and we witness joy. As we move forward every day, I believe that the creator asks of us what we can do and what we can give to our communities. We are not asked to go forward without joy because Jesus died for our joy. So we should take pleasure in our work and celebrate all good things in Christ. We know the fear of the upper room. We know the feeling of hard days and long nights. We know the grief of the tomb and the particular ache of saying goodbye. We know the pain of Good Friday and we know the darkness before dawn. And still, and still, we believe. We believe that again and again the sun will rise, again and again God will draw near, again and again we will march toward justice, again and again the tomb will be empty, again and again love will win. Again and again, God will lead the church. And again and again and again and again, we will be loved. The journey will not be perfect. We will need to rise before dawn. We will need angels along the way. But again and again, the sun will rise. We believe. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, 
we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Leaving God, in the midst of Easter joy, we are still filled with questions and wondering. Open our hearts and minds as we encounter the scriptures so that the church embodies repentance and forgiveness in the name of Jesus to all nations. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Creating God, like a master artist, you have fashioned the universe out of your love and delight. Heal your creation where it is in need of restoration. Provide all the inhabitants of earth a peaceful and sustainable home. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness. Wholeness, especially those we think of now. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God, of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for the lives among us, especially Zikau. Assure us of the peace you have been promised, that we may join them in everlasting life. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jumripsua, Salam. The peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is sure. Word and water, wine and bread, 
These are signs of your abundant grace. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. O God triune, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Over the eons, your merciful might evolved our home, a fragile tree of life. Here, by your wisdom, are both life and death, growth and decay. The nest and the hunt, sunshine and storm, darkness and light. Sustained by these wonders, we creatures of dust join in the ancient song, the earth is full of your glory. The earth, earth is full, full of your glory. O oh God, triune, you took on our flesh in Jesus, our healer. In Christ, you bring life from death. We remember his cross. We celebrate his resurrection. Broken like bread, he enlivens our body. Out poured like wine, he fills the earth with goodness. Receiving this mystery, we sing our song. The earth is full of your glory. The, the earth, earth is full of your glory. We praise you for the heart of Jesus so filled with your love for this earth. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it for all to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in memory of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered around this and all our tables, we, your children, unite in this song the earth is full of your glory the, the earth, earth is full of, of your glory O oh god triune you create the worlds you uphold the living you embrace the dead send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth strengthen us for our journey with this meal the body and blood of christ Give us a future that trusts in you and cares for your earth. Empowered by your promises, we rise from our deaths to praise you again. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. Amen and amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table, come eat and be satisfied. Now, if you are gathered with others, when the music begins, please share with one another, first the bread and then the cup with the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ poured out for you. If you are by yourself, I offer this invitation. Receive the body of Christ given for you. Receive the blood of Christ poured out for you. And if for any reason you will not receive communion bread and cup today, a blessing for you. May God fill you up with the Holy Spirit and give you all that you need.
wellspring of joy. Through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen. 
Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.